All right, on this video, we're going to be talking about the differences, the pros, the cons of a low fat raw vegan diet versus a high fat raw vegan diet versus a cooked vegan diet. So let's start with the low fat raw vegan diet, which um, I would say is our favorite diet really so far yeah. from everything we tried. That's definitely what I feel best on. So low fat would be, low fat raw vegan would be pretty well just fruit really because mm -hmm. the only other options that provide fat or avocados, nuts, seeds, mm -hmm. and oils if you consider them raw. Mm -hmm. uh, and things like that, I feel like they just kind of bring me down and just mm -hmm. make me feel a little bit heavier. Sluggish. Maybe a little bit more grounded if you're feeling too mm -hmm. light, you know, on just light, watery fruits. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that would be a, a con of it. Sometimes people feel way too up there and up in the clouds from low fat. But uh, definitely, I feel like you have more energy on low fat. Yeah, you feel lighter. Yeah, lighter. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. but it can be tricky, right? It can be tricky to follow a low fat raw vegan diet. Yeah, I think one of the other cons would be cravings. Yeah, I mean, you, you get, get more get cravings, cravings with a low fat diet. When you're eating avocados and stuff like that, I think it holds the cravings yeah. up pretty good. Well, and another con I would say on the low fat raw vegan diet is that it's a little bit more challenging to feel up right to feel full mm -hmm. because let's say if I have if I have a tangerine or a single mango it's not gonna fill me up like having an avocado yeah it takes some adjusting to get used to portions how much mm -hmm. you need and, and just the feeling of not having that heavy fat satiating feeling yeah yeah, yeah. so let's talk about now the high fat raw vegan diet what would you say it's the, the pros and the cons yeah. on that one. Well, I mean, like I said, like cravings definitely are, are less substantial. Yeah, with, so with less high intense fat. cravings and uh -huh. high fat. Um, Fats are delicious. Fats. I would say that's yeah, a pro. They're really, really good. Avocados okay, and nuts mm, and stuff like that yeah. are pretty good. Digestion is not quite as good, though. Yeah, so that's a con yeah. on the fat. Um, yeah, I mean, and you, I remember, for example, when I when I was doing a, a low fat raw vegan, I did this in Hawaii. I was almost. Mm. Two, two entire weeks eating, eating only papayas and my digestion was just like on point mm. and one day I decided to have a little bit of an avocado and I had maybe like a fourth of an avocado and my digestion just stopped yeah and you know I, I probably think, just wanted to go to sleep <laughs> yeah it was just it was just very very noticeable so mm -hmm. I think that we don't really notice how fat yeah. affects us because we're so used to especially people that are coming from a like a standard American diet where there's 30, 40% of the calories yeah. come from fat or more or more. Yeah. So a lot of people just don't really understand like how, how, how fat does affect them and, yeah. and how much fat they're really getting in. I think people don't realize how much oil is in things and how, what that does to your macro ratios mm -hmm. when you're eating foods mm -hmm. high in oil. So yeah. how would you say that this compared to cooked vegan? Well, cooked vegan, I think it's it's pretty difficult unless you're cooking all your own meals to do low fat cooked. Mm -hmm. So the same rules sort of apply, except with cooked, I mean, you feel a little bit more heavy and a little mm -hmm. bit more, you know, maybe out of touch with things and your digestion isn't quite as good. But right. that being said, if you if you did, you know, a high carb, low fat, raw vegan or cooked vegan diet, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. Like, yeah. You still feel not too bad. Your digestion is still going to be better than if you're eating animal products. And yeah, stuff and like there's there's uh, an example, for example, uh, Doug Graham, who wrote the 80 10 mm -hmm. book, which is a book where he recommends eating 80% uh, carbohydrates, 10% yeah. protein, 10% fat. He actually says that it's better to eat yeah. cooked low fat than to eat raw high yeah. fat yeah he prioritizes his macro ratios over mm -hmm. over raw or cooked yeah. Yeah. would you say that you have the same experience like do you prefer no I, I say even even high fat raw or high fat yeah high fat raw with lots of avocados and stuff maybe not nuts and seeds but mm -hmm. with avocados and stuff I still feel better eating yeah two three avocados a day than yeah. I do eating cooked food well there's there's a very important mm -hmm. Uh, thing to consider which is when do you have the fat because mm -hmm. if you're having the fat in the evening as the last meal on its own yeah. then it's not going to be so much of an issue because you know towards the end of the day you're already yeah. getting ready to go to bed and if you have it if you have it early enough like maybe let's say two or three hours before bedtime you're not going to be feeling like full and sluggish 
during during the time when you want to sleep, you'll feel like normal. Versus, let's say, if you have you know two or three avocados for breakfast, and then you try to go to the gym. Yeah, that's just yeah. not gonna work. And and also, you know, in terms of food combining, you know, we want to mm-hmm. have the high water content foods uh, way before the, the the high fatty foods because otherwise, if you have all that fat slowly digestion in your in your digestive system and then you throw in the the high carb stuff or the high water stuff it's going to kind of mm-hmm. clog it up so yeah there's a lot of variables to consider yeah yeah and like if you go on for example with a sort of like an intermittent fasting approach then mm-hmm. doing you know doing just one fatty meal towards the end of the day it's going to be different than if you had like three different meals of fat mm-hmm. or or maybe having just one fatty meal at the end of the day versus having like five heavy carb meals throughout the day like maybe in that case like the high mm-hmm. fat individual meal yeah. will be better i mean there's a lot of people who swear by you know they do raw ketosis right. raw vegan ketosis and they swear by it yeah you know? so yeah maybe it is possible to feel great on a high fat like super high fat raw vegan yeah diet. definitely definitely different people depending on their on their lifestyle can you know some people can get away with the high fat some people can't I I tend to go more towards uh, sort of like a balanced situation. I don't like doing a, a totally low fat or no fat diet. I mean, it's a, it's impossible really to have a no fat. Yeah, because it's a small amount. You could do like a ninety-five yeah. five or something. There's like that. fat in tangerines. Yeah. There's fat in pineapples. There's fat in bananas. So yeah, there's not a no fat diet. I feel good on low fat for a certain length of time, and then I feel good getting some fat back into my diet. I think it's good for short periods of time, maybe, you know, a week, two weeks, three weeks of very, very low fat, but then it's it's good to get some some fat. Yeah, yeah, and and eventually, at some point, I feel that you might rather go back to eating more fat if you're feeling cold to it, because otherwise, if you don't, then the crude crude cravings will start to catch on to you, and then it's sort of like all downhill Mm -hmm. from there.